We live in a world that is surrounded by technology. Undoubtedly, our lives are such that they revolve around it. Whether it is the complex computer systems, the phones in our pockets, or even the watches on our wrists, technology has given us access to information at a scale that has never before been seen in the history of the human race. Hundreds of hours of videos are uploaded to the internet every minute. Thousands of pictures and billions of instant messages are sent across the world each hour. Not only are we able to send and store vast amounts of information, the growth of our communication networks allow us to transfer this information anywhere in the world within seconds, across boundaries that were unimaginable just a few years ago. This informational and technological advancement has affected every country and every industry on the planet. It is unsurprising then that it has also played a role in the propagation of the message of Islam by the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. This is perhaps most evident in the way that Jalsa Aslana is run in many countries every year. This is a story of how technology has played a key role in the development of Jalsa Aslana over the last 124 years. It was the year 1938, whilst the Allied forces strived to keep Adolf Hitler at bay and ensure stability in Europe, something magnificent took place in India. While sitting in a remote village of the Punjab, Hazrat Muslimaud, the second caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, delivered the following sermon. That day is nigh, in which an individual will be able to lecture and teach from one place captivating the entire world in the process. For now, our situation does not permit us. Currently, we do not have enough resources. There is an obstacle in the form of a lack of scientific advancement. However, should all these barriers be removed, and given the success Allah the Exalted is granting us at such a rapid pace, it should be understood that in the near future, all these obstacles will be removed. Once this happens, it is well possible that a sermon of the Qur'an and Hadith be delivered in Qadian, and people of Java, America, England, France, Germany, Australia, Hungary, Arabia, Egypt, Iran, and similarly in all other countries would be listening to that very sermon from their respective places through a wireless radio. What a spectacular scene this would be indeed. It would be the dawn of a magnificent revolution, the mere thought of which fills our hearts with delight and rapture. This was no ordinary statement. In fact, hindsight tells us that this snapshot of the next 80 years ensued exactly as stated. When the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, initiated the institution of Jalsa Salana in 1891, the purpose of this gathering was to unite the whole of mankind under the banner of the unity of God. The first Jalsa was attended by 75 guests, arriving first to the nearest train station, Batala, then completing the journey by horse cart or by foot. It is only through the grace of Allah that the last century saw the Jalsa expand from a few guests arriving to one remote village to thousands of guests, some arriving by car, some by bus, by train, aeroplane or by ship. Regardless of which transport they are using, one can only admire the fulfillment of the prophecy and when the she-camels, 10 months pregnant, are abandoned. With the ever-growing guests of the Prophet Messiah, peace be upon him, attending the blessed conventions, the demand for food and its rapid distribution has increased many-fold. From the small kitchen and single effort of Hazrat Amajan, Anha, many departments and hundreds of volunteers are required just for the catering of the guests. Today's technology provides the Jalsa Salana with the capability of producing thousands of naan each hour. 
Had it not been for the technology, the feeding of a few hundred would have been a challenge, let alone thousands. It is this progress of technology that has enabled the divinely established langar to flourish and cater for all the participants. From the very beginning, the Promised Messiah always looked for ways and means to spread, to spread the message far and wide, whether it's in the publication of books um, and getting it across the globe. The audiovisual means were considered as a way of spreading the message of Islam, Ahmadiyyat, from the early steps of the phonograph and throughout the Khilafah after that. Allah Ta'ala ne jo ye wada farmaya ke main teri tabli ko zameen ke kinaron tak pahunchaunga jo kis shaan se pura farmaya hai hamare vehm o gumaan mein bhi ye baat nahi aa sakti thi kal parson ki baat hai hum radio ki baatein karte the to apne apne andar ye maqdirat nahi paate the ki hum koi international radio hi qaim kar sake kuja wo din aur kuja do teen saal ke arse mein ye ahmadiyat ke qafle ka phalangta hua safar जो पहले जमीन पर छलांगे मार रहा था वह आसमानों पर उड़ने लगा है और आसमान से फिर जमीन पर उतरता है और पैगाम देकर फिर अपने सब पर रवा दवा होता है ये निजाम खुदा ने हमें अता फरमाया है और ये उस इल्हाम की बरकत है ना कि हमारी कोशिशों की दईडिया ऑफ अ रेडियो स्टेशन वॉज इन दर्ली सेवेंटीज और इन दीज जूंग द लाइफ ऑफ खलीफ मसीह दर्ड रहम And that was something, a dream, that uh, the Jamaat wanted to fulfill. It is truly extraordinary how a small community who barely had the means of starting even a radio station went on to launch the first ever 24-hour Muslim television channel. Jis maka ki aarzu mehdi ko thi ਕੁਤੀ خلیفۃ المسیح رابع رحم اللہ almost single handedly uh, decided to go for a TV station it was started as uh, the Ahmadiyya Muslim presentation uh, to start with for the Friday sermon every week and that increased slowly as the need um, arose The progress of technology has not only impacted the jalsa on the ground level but changes even took place thousands of miles above the earth. Nowadays relatively the satellite capacity or the satellite availability is relatively a lot cheaper than it used to be in the olden days. Nowadays we use digital technology where you need a small fraction of what you needed in the past and obviously that was reflected also in the cost. Initially the Khalifa would deliver this sermon and the millions of anxious Ahmadis would wait for weeks for the tapes to arrive to their respective countries Now however a voice transmitted from a microphone is echoed to the four corners of the earth Prior to the start of MTA the, the audio visual uh, mediums were utilized where it's through audio tapes or video tapes and they used to be distributed to different centers around the world uh, the khutbah juma used to be transcribed people used to listen to it directly from huzur's voice but the um, start of mta um, it gave a totally different uh, dimension to the whole thing where translations were also available so people could listen to the to the um, friday sermons directly uh, in their own languages as huzur delivered uh, delivered them in london Naturally we had to adapt with the technologies available in MTA has constantly improved and tried to um, adjust itself with the technological advancements 
in some occasions it, uh, it was one of uh, uh, the leadings or the, or the forefront of, of technology, especially when the digital transmission came uh, to play a big role in the world of, of transmission. And we were amongst the first to transmit to consumers uh, in digital form in North America. We developed our own receivers, which obviously weren't available in the market during that time, and we distributed that to our uh, viewers. And from then onwards, the digital technology, uh, digital transmission started taking shape, and that has become a standard that anyone um, who wants to watch satellite television now has a box uh, like that in their houses. From humble beginnings and under the divine guidance of Khilafat, MTA International has grown from strength to strength, utilizing ever-changing and advancing technologies to transmit the voice of Khilafat throughout the globe. MTA started a, a, as a very small setup. Um, our teams, Hazrat Musir Rabe had taken uh, on himself to train the people, to give them exact vision and direction, and he had that um, clear in his mind, uh, the teams used to, to meet with him almost on a daily basis. MTA started uh, in a studio where most of the programs were live. Khalid Khalid Masih Rabe, Rahimullah, used to come to the studio, which was almost a five meter by five meter studio, one single room, which also happens to be the library of MTA International. And on, uh, on top of the shelves, we used to have a, a curtain that runs over them and Huzul used to come to the same room um, and conduct his uh, live programs from there. Jalsa Salanas from a very long time, they used to be recorded on tapes, uh, but when MTA started, the recordings and the audiovisual side took a different dimension altogether as it connected the whole Jamaat around the world as its trans uh, MTS transmission was reaching every corner, it took the Jalsa to a totally different level, from a local, national level to an international level, where people simultaneously, at, at, at the same time, they used to join the Khalifa and the gathering um, in the United, uh, United Kingdom or anywhere else around the world, which culminated in one of the Jalsas to the international bayat, where people gave allegiance, gave pledge to the Khalifa through MTA International. And this is where uh, MTA International played a vital role and uh, the direct link uh, between the followers and their Khalifa. MTA International started in, in its early days with three broadcast cameras. Uh, then when the new team was established, we had an additional two cameras, which are almost a consumer type cameras. Now, in, in the center, we have over 20 cameras. MTA has started to capture the content of the Khulafa primarily and their programs in HD. The first uh, Jalsa Salana that was recorded in HD and preserved in high definition was in 2006. And since then, India has been preserving that material in that form. And now we are reaching the level of uh, acquiring material uh, and preserving it in 4K alongside the, the HD, uh, the high definition, of course. Uh, but this is something that we aspire to preserve the highest quality possible uh, for future proofing and future generations. The coverage of the International Jalsa Salana, specifically in the UK, has changed and still changing every single year. The scope of it is, is getting bigger and bigger. The coverage around the world is getting wider and wider. This year, in 2015, we have three channels that are transmitting separately. MTA1, MTA3, and our MTA feed for Africa. Apart from that, the utilization of the social media, the new technologies, the new media, the online 
platforms to make sure that the viewers have the best experience of Jalsa Salana and we try to bring the environment, not only the speeches, the addresses that are given within the Jalsa Ga, but also the experience of the people in Jalsa Salana from the spiritual and the uh, physical experience uh, of being there. Since the world has become a global village, the millions of Ahmadis who are unable to partake in the Jalsas can connect and watch the proceedings live on their televisions or via the internet sitting just about anywhere in the world. By the grace and blessings of Allah the Almighty, we live in an age where the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is able to use all types of modern technologies to facilitate the enormous task of undertaking the Jalsa Salana year after year. We have seen how the technology has been used at the Jalsa from helping with the transport of thousands of guests to how the technology has changed to accommodate for the food preparation and distribution and how advancements in technology over the years has allowed for the transmission of the live broadcast of the Jalsa to reach the corners of the earth. All these advancements in technology throughout the years has assisted the Ahmadiyya Muslim community to spread the voice of Khilafat and the true teachings of Islam to millions of people throughout the world, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Hazrat Muslim Aud. Shukar Khuda ka har dil mein hai Ahmadiyat zindabad Ahmadiyat zindabad